In this video, we're going to learn how to find the volume and surface area of a cylinder. I'll be assuming you already know how to find the volume and surface area of a prism, and also area and circumference of a circle. If you'd like to revisit either of these topics, I'll put links to my videos on them in this video's description. So let's take a cylinder, and we'll begin by looking at its volume. In the previous video, we learnt to find the volume of a prism, you would do the area of the cross section multiplied by the length. Now, whilst the cylinder isn't technically a prism, you can think of it as a prism where the cross section is a circle. If this were the cross section, then this would be the length. But for a cylinder, we don't tend to call it length, we call it the height due to how we draw the cylinder. So we can find the volume of a cylinder by doing the area of the cross section, which is a circle, so the area of a circle, which is given by pi r squared, and then we multiply it by the length, which we're now calling the height, so let's use the letter h. So to find the volume of a cylinder, we do pi r squared multiplied by h, which we could just write as pi r squared h. So this is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Let's use this formula to find the volume of this cylinder. So we would say the volume equals pi multiplied by r squared, so the radius squared, and we can see from the diagram the radius here is 3, so 3 squared. And then we multiply by the height, and we can see the height of this cylinder is 8, so multiplied by 8. Now, depending on how the question's worded, you may just type this into your calculator, but if this is on paper 1, the non-calculator paper, it may well say, give your answer in terms of pi. If this is the case, then we'll start by looking at 3 squared here, which means 3 times 3, which is 9. So we actually have pi times 9 times 8. We can then multiply the 9 and 8 together, which will give you 72. So we have pi multiplied by 72, which is just 72 pi. So this would be the answer to the volume in terms of pi, and we need to give it some units. The units of volume here would be centimeters cubed. Now if it's on the calculator paper, it may well say something like, give your answer to one decimal place. So let's redo this question and give the answer to one decimal place. So rather than doing 3 squared and then multiplying it by 8, we can just type this whole thing as it is into the calculator. So you just type in pi times 3 squared times 8. And then if you change your format to a decimal, you'll end up with this number here. To round this number to one decimal place, it will be 226.2 centimeters cubed. Let's try a second cylinder, this one here. So the volume is equal to pi, then we multiply by the radius squared. But in this question, we haven't been given the radius. We've been given this length here, which is the diameter at 24. The radius is half of the diameter. So if we half 24, we find the radius is 12. So you need to be careful and make sure you're using the right numbers in the formula. So we would multiply by 12 squared, not 24 squared, and the height is 14, so multiply by 14. Let's imagine this question said, give your answer to two decimal places. So we would just type this into the calculator, which will give you this number here, and that rounded to two decimal places is 6,333.45 centimeters cubed. Now let's try one more cylinder. So to find the volume of this one, we will do volume equals pi multiplied by the radius squared, and once again, I've given you the diameter this time, so we need to half 20 to get a radius of 10. So multiplied by 10 squared, and then we need to multiply by the height. So you can see I've turned the cylinder around this time, but this 0 0.8 here would be the height. But that 0 0.8 is given in meters, and we use the radius in centimeters. So we'll need to convert the 0 0.8 into centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, so 0 0.8 meters will be 80 centimeters. So we would multiply by 80. Let's imagine that this question said, give your answer to three significant figures. So we would type the whole thing into the calculator and end up with this number here, which rounded to three significant figures is 25,100 centimeters cubed. Here are two cylinders for you to have a go at. Feel free to pause the video and then check your answers afterwards. So for the first cylinder, we would do volume equals pi multiplied by the radius squared, and we can see the radius for this one is 5, so multiplied by 5 squared, and then multiplied by the height, which we can see is 4, so multiplied by 4. This one says to give it in terms of pi, so we're going to need to work out 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, so 25, and then we can multiply the 25 and the 4 to get 100. So it's pi times 100, or 100 pi, centimeters cubed. For the next question, we need to do volume equals pi 
And the radius this time is not given in the question, we've been given the diameter at 9. So if the diameter is 9, the radius must be half of this at 4.5. So it's times 4.5 squared, and the height is just 18, so multiplied by 18. We type all of this into the calculator and we'll get this number here. And this question says to give it to one decimal place, which would be 1145.1. Now let's take a look at a more difficult question involving the volume of a cylinder. So if we take this cylinder here, and the question tells us that the volume of the cylinder is 370 centimeters cubed. This is already different because they've told us the volume, rather than asking us to work it out. Then we're told to work out h, the height of the cylinder. And we need to give the answer to one decimal place. So this question requires us to work backwards to work out the height of the cylinder instead. Let's imagine we were working forwards and trying to work out the volume of the cylinder. We'd first of all work out the area of this circular cross section here. The radius is 4, so we would do pi times 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16, so this is pi times 16, or 16 pi. Then we would normally multiply by the height given in the question, but in this question the height's not been given, it just says h. So let's write multiply by h. And this would give us the volume, but we know the volume in this question, we've been told it's 370. So this must equal 370. Now we formed an equation to solve in terms of h. If you multiply 16 pi and h together, you get 16 pi h. To find the value of h, we can just divide both sides by 16 pi. On the left hand side, the 16 pi's will cancel, so we're left with h. And on the right hand side, we need to do 370 divided by 16 pi, which you can do on your calculator, and it will give you 7.36 and so on. This question said to give your answer to one decimal place, so we'd round this off to 7.4. Now let's take a look at how you find the surface area. So if we take a cylinder, the surface area is the total area of all of its faces. We have a circular face here on the top, and a circular face on the bottom. The area of the top one is pi r squared, and so is the area of the bottom one, because they're the same size circle. So at the moment we have pi r squared, plus another pi r squared, which we could write as 2 pi r squared. So that's the area of the circular faces, but there's one more face on this cylinder. It's this curved face that goes around the cylinder here. How do we find the area of this face? Imagine for a moment that this cylinder is a tube, and we cut down the tube along this line here. We could then unwrap the tube to end up with something like this, and then if we unwrap it fully and roll it out, it would form a rectangle like this. The height of this rectangle will be the same as the height of the original cylinder, which we would just call h. So the height of this rectangle is also h. But what about the width of the rectangle? Well, if you began to roll this rectangle back up to a cylinder, you would see that this length matches with this edge here, which when you go all the way back to a cylinder, is this circle here. So the length of the top of the rectangle is the same as this red line here, which we would call the circumference of the circle. The formula for the circumference of a circle is pi multiplied by the diameter, or pi d. So the width of this rectangle is also pi d. Now that we know the height and the width of this rectangle, we're able to find its area. We can do this by multiplying pi d and h together, which would be pi dh. So the area of the curved surface of the cylinder is pi dh. So we can add this on to our surface area formula, and we end up with this. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus pi dh. Let's use this to find the surface area of this cylinder. We'll start by doing surface area is equal to 2 multiplied by pi, and then we need to multiply by the radius squared. And you can see in this question the radius is 5, so multiplied by 5 squared. Then we need to add to this pi multiplied by the diameter, which will be twice the radius. So if the radius was 5, the diameter will be 10. So multiply by 10, and then multiply by the height, which we can see here is 12. So multiply by 12. Now just like the volume questions, this could say to give your answer in terms of pi. To do that, we'll focus on this part here first. 5 squared is 5 times 5, so 25. And then we've got 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 25. We can just multiply the 2 and the 25 together to get 50. So it's 50 times pi, or 50 pi. Then for this part here, we need to multiply pi and 10 and 12. You can just multiply 10 and 12 to get 120. So that's 120 pi. So we would add to this 120 pi. Now you can add 50 pi and 120 pi together. 
To do this, you would add 50 and 120, which is 170, so it's 170 pi. The units this time would be centimeters squared because we're talking about surface area rather than a volume. Now, if the question said to give your answer, say, to one decimal place, you could just type this whole entire calculation into your calculator. That would give you this number here, and let's say for sake it said to give your answer to one decimal place. Then it would be 534.1 centimeters squared. Here are two more cylinders for you to try and find the surface area of. Feel free to pause the video and give them a try yourself. And for the answers, the first one is the surface area is equal to 2 multiplied by pi and multiplied by the radius squared. And we can see the radius in this question is 4, so multiplied by 4 squared. And then we add to this pi multiplied by the diameter, which will be double the radius. So if the radius was 4, the diameter is 8. So multiplied by 8 and then multiply by the height, which we can see here is 3. So multiply by 3. This one says to give your answer in terms of pi. So if we work on this part here first, 4 squared is 16, and then if we multiply the 2 and the 16 together, we get 32. So the surface area is 32 pi. And then for the second part, 8 times 3 is 24, so that's 24 pi. And then if we add 32 and 24 together, we get 56. So the surface area is 56 pi, centimeters squared. For the second question, we would do the surface area equals 2 multiplied by pi, and then we need to multiply by the radius squared, but in this question, they didn't give us the radius. The diameter is given as 6, which will mean the radius is half of this, which is 3. So multiply by 3 squared, and then we add pi, multiply by the diameter, and the diameter is 6, so multiply by 6, and then multiply by the height, which we can see is 14, so multiply by 14. This time, the question says to give your answer to two decimal places, so we can just type all of this into the calculator, which will give you this number here. If we do round it to two decimal places, we get 320.44 centimeters squared. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and take a look at the exam questions in this video's description.